Welcome to the messiest of our messy spaces. This is the dye room. Um, that's the very back of the creepy basement in Montgomery. Um, for those of you who know our uh, theater and dance offices, for those of you who don't, I hope that you'll make your way to us um, once we're back on campus together. So what I want to show you first off is how to prep your, um, your, your piece of fabric for the dyeing process. What we're going to do is a dye process um, that is uh, called a resist process. It is used around the world um, in various forms. Um, some of the more famous are um, batik processes, um, which come from uh, places like Africa, Indonesia, India, um, and a lot of those processes use wax or something to keep the dye from going into the fabric in certain areas. In Japan, there is a process that is known as shibori dye, and I will be sending you all some links, um, you hopefully will have gotten them before you're viewing this video, of some examples of shibori dyeing in Japan. Frequently it is done with indigo dyes, um, and uh, is a very beautiful process. Um, by which the fabric is folded in certain ways and the folds basically act as a resist for the for the dye. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, maybe look at some ways in which you can fold your fabric for dyeing. Okay, um, so I have my square here um, and I have one of the zip ties um, that I have sent y'all. I also have a few other items. You really don't need anything other than the fabric and the zip ties, but sometimes here on campus, we will actually, and if you look at the, um, at the online sources that I send you, they'll show you, um, sometimes for shibori, uh, they will actually use an item um, that the fabric will be folded around. So if I were going to do something like that, what I might do is I might fold my fabric like this and then something that we have used here on campus is we have used um, things like uh, this piece of, uh, of plywood here um, and we might then fold this in a certain way. and then take this piece of plywood, put it on there on both sides, strap it together, and then dye our edges, okay? And as you can see, you would probably have a whole lot of white area left on your fabric were you to do that, okay? Um, again, if this is something you want to experiment with at home, you could probably use um, maybe some cardboard. The trick is, is you're going to be dipping this whole thing into your soda ash when you're done. So you might want to just stick with um, using your using your zip ties. Okay. So if you're going to just use your zip ties, um, what you might choose to do um, uh, in thinking about what you might want your fabric to be you might want something of a swirl. Many of you all may have done this on a t-shirt or something. Um, uh, uh, the, we are fond in this country of things like tie-dye, um, which again comes from these um, other processes. Um, so you might want to do some sort of twist or swirl, okay? Then what you can do, and my apologies, my hands are getting in the way of the video there, is you could twist it and then you could twist it on around like this. So you have sort of a little snail, right? And then you might take your zip ties and strap them in a few places on here to hold it in this sort of donut twisted shape then you could put your dye in a few different locations around it, which we'll demo in another video. Okay, that's one thing you could do. 
Another thing you could do is you could take this and you could do it in a more geometric way. You could do a series of smaller pleated accordion folds. If you can see that, I did a fold up and then I did another fold up and then another fold and another fold. Okay, all the way up this. Till I have like a long pleat, long pleated object. Then I'm going to do that again going this direction. Okay, this is obviously going to give me sort of a checkerboardy feeling to this, which is an interesting. interesting pattern. Okay, so I might do something like that. And then I can take my zip ties and I can strap them around this like that. And I'll demo how to do the zip ties in just a second. Okay, so that's another way. You could of course make this different sizes of, of, uh, of squares. Um, on your fabric. The other thing that you might be interested in doing is doing a series of different smaller circles. So you could choose to do one in that corner and then I would take my zip tie and I would wrap it around and tie it down. You could also, if you have some leftover rubber bands at home, this is a good use for a leftover rubber bands. You can use those on the uh, uh, on the corners too. But you could choose to do that on this corner, you, this corner, you could do one in the center, one on each corner, you could do multiples across um, the, the fabric, okay? And then you could make a decision, are they all the same color or do you use um, one color on one and one color on another, two colors on each? Um, uh, the, that's a decision that you can make. Um, one last thing to show you, um, if you have, um, this might be a good use for a straw, this is a piece of PVC, um, but if you had um, something like a straw, um, another thing that you can do is you can use an object like this to sort of help you with your twist, okay, by inserting it and twisting your fabric around it. Okay, and then putting your zip tie on. You can also, um, you could, if you have a tube like that, you could roll it, roll your fabric onto the tube. And then choose to do some edge work along your fabric and you would have an interesting pattern when you were done. Okay, and you hold this on there, of course, by using your zip ties. Just to give you a good close up demo of how these zip ties work. And again, if you prefer and if you have some uh, uh, rubber bands at home um, that are not being used, you are welcome to use those. But these zip ties work by you put them together like that and you slide them, okay, just like that. And you can slide them firmly down on and they'll hold your fabric in place, okay? To release the zip tie then, you don't need to cut it. There is a little, uh, little plastic button right there. Pull on that and then you can release the zip tie just like that and then it's reusable, okay? All right, so 
Um, if everyone will do that, then meet me back. I'll fold a few and get them strapped down and then I'll show you what your next step will be.